Hello and welcome to another video of Silky Pix. In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit in Silky Pix and I will show my workflow from import to export. Uh, in this particular file, we have a photo of uh, Montreux, francophone uh, city of Switzerland, not far from uh, Paris, about two and a half hours or three hours by train. Um, highly recommend it. Anyway, let's jump into the edit. Now, first of all, um, I haven't done anything to this video. Uh, what I want, I want uh, the blue to be a bit more punchy, top of the mountain, a bit more visible, a uh, bit more contrasty, but I don't mind having those mist because it gives a little bit more uh, mystic character and I like it. However, there is a problem with, uh, it's not really straight, so I would like to fix that one too. So my workflow usually start with, I pick my color, I that's the base and good thing about the silky pix developer studio it will allow you to use fuji's own um, uh, simulations so you can go to the i'll restart again you can go to the color click color not from this section because it, it's not there you have to come to the profile theme simulation i've taken this photo originally with astia so that i can have a bit more uh, that was already preset i might have forgotten to change it at the time of taking this photo right now i wouldn't mind having a velvia which is a bit more saturated a bit more punchy and contrasty and then uh, i'm done so i do have my color so what i do want now checking my white balance right now the white balance is at about the daylight the 59 uh, 5900 so if I actually go to the natural, it does warm it up a little bit, but however, it's actually giving me a global warmness. I, what I want, I want the blue to be blue, while this part of the photo um, to be warm as it is. So I can go to the fine color controller and then click blue, which is this, and then add some saturation, pump up the hue a little bit, and reduce the lightness as you can tell by is already have done a very good job so we have done our step one the color now um, in terms of the exposure uh, fortunately I've got nothing clipping yes I do have a little bit of black uh, here that's been clipping which I assume this part yep that's right it's right there but I'm okay with that I don't have to have everything uh, visible this black actually giving me a base character of the subject so I'm fine with that however what I want is to get rid of a little bit of uh, make this uh, top of the mountain a bit more clear so I can go to the contrast so I can add a little bit of contrast to my photo um, and then add a touch clarity not too much I don't go crazy with the slider and then add a bit of haze now we can see that it's doing a great job uh, what I can do, I can add some black to my image and then finally when I have a base, as you can tell, uh, things are clearing up a little bit and I'm happy with it. My original intention to have three different layers. My first layer is the clear sky, um, actually four layers here. Second layer is the top of the mountain covered by the mist and then you have water with the boat and the subject at the foreground so we, I have all visible and nice and clear so we have a base there so what else we can do we can if you look at the histogram uh, here you have a little bit of gap so I can turn on my warnings uh, and then see what's missing so the my warning saying that my exposures are good it's, it did a very good job it's nice and round however it's showing me that I lost a bit of information on that particular area so if I choose I can right now I have to make a creative decision do I really want uh, to uh, recover the shadow from that particular area is it important or can I let it go well that depends if you're printing your photograph then uh, the black might crush uh, depends on how you're printing it but if it's for web it's actually nice um, sun coming from that direction and then the back is dark so uh, that gives a bit 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 good um, character however I can go to my exposure and what I can do I can click dodge and add a bit more give a bit more boost to my uh, to my brightness but I think I don't need a bit more brightness what I can do I can actually go to the color burn and then as you can tell my histogram is uh, doing a very good job it's nice and round and then I can add a bit more shadow not too much and 
uh, honestly, I'm already happy with the result. I don't really need to play too much uh, with anything else anymore. It has a brilliant base. Silky Pigs developer also lets you do local correction. So I can add a gradient filter and then go up right there because uh, my foreground is doing a good job. I'm happy with my foreground. However, I still want my top of the mountain to be a bit more, bit more uh, well exposed. So I can, so that's it. So that's, that's the part that I want to work with. So I can reduce, I can actually add a bit more lightness there. There you go. That's the part of the lightness and I can add some saturation. So that's been more pop. And then, oh no. The hue, I don't touch hue at all. Maybe a reduce about two. So that's that's all right. And then add a bit more contrast. Probably, you know, I don't necessarily have to have a bit more light there because it it's good as it is. But the last thing I want to do is to pick my color picker, put the dropper there, and you can tell the that's the color. So what I can do, I can uh, go to the hue and make it a bit more, bit more blue. Add some blue there as well. Right, so where are we? We have a blue sky, we have a warm mist, and we have the subject on the rock, and water and the boat. It's a brilliant photo as it is. Uh, no more uh, retouching needed at this very moment. Um, my blacks, my blacks are all right. I can add some bit more black to give it more punch and that's it. So last thing I have to do here uh, to make the photo a bit more straight because you can see it's not really well aligned. Um, I can go to rotation and shift lens, click this tool and then make it a bit more straight. As you can see by the grid, it's not really straight. So what I can do, oh, I think I think that's all right guys. I think. Uh, you did a good job. So last thing I have to look at is um, the sharpness. The, for, the Because it's the raw photograph, um, we are obliged to add a bit sharpness to the photograph. I can go to the sharpening module, which is here. And then a natural sharp, that's fine. I prefer to add uh, the normal sharp, which um, adds a bit more sharpness to the photo. It's a bit more strong, so I don't go crazy with the slider. And then... There you go. I think that's about right. Uh, doesn't need a bit more sharpening. Um, what I, last thing I like to do, go to the development setting. And if it's a good image with 200 ISO and uh, has doesn't have any noise, I like to crank the demosaic sharpening all the way up. As much as I can. The demosaic sharpening is the input sharpening. So it generally provides you a very clean, nice photograph as long as your photo doesn't have any digital noise. So if you have it, I don't know if there is any other software that allows you to add input sharpening in your photograph. I could crop it a little bit. What do you say? What I can do, I can get rid of this rock that in that corner. And then this, I don't have too much of a boring sky, but I need that sky just to give it a little bit of more character so I can crop maybe a touch there i want the subject to be in this uh, rule of third so maybe there and uh, there you go much better and that's a brilliant photograph so now the final thing we have to do is to export uh, i don't have to do any kind of noise directions it's a very clean photograph and i don't have to work with my um, distortion or vignette because photo is just uh, good as the way it is um, doesn't necessarily have to touch with any other tool so I can jump I, can, I have two options either I can um, open with for whatever you have I have affinity photo I can go to the affinity photo and then do some further editing if I have to but at this point I don't see I don't have any reason to do so um, it's just beautiful beautiful piece of photograph so I can jump right into export pick my folder you have either you can export as JPEG or you can choose TIFF, depends on how you like. Um, I always choose JPEG and then highest quality possible. 
so that if I upload in Instagram or Facebook, then the comp after the compression, it doesn't do too much of a change. And then for the sake of the video, what I can do, I can add shooting condition. So it shows um, the lens at the edge top, the shutter speed and the ISO. And that's all I need. And I can change the location of that. I, can, I would like to have that a bit more in the corner. So I can go there, move them a bit more on the side. And that should do the job. Preview. That looks all right. There you go. As you can see, the location has changed. Now, I pick my folder, I pick my settings. And the last thing I can do, because it's for web, so I can click unsharp marks for web and then develop or export. The export is done. Now, let's take a look. How good is that? As you can see, you have you have all the characters that necessary. Uh, the subject at the foreground is really nice and sharp. Let's look at 100% brilliant. I don't know the. I hope the YouTube doesn't compress the quality of the video, but the full Im image looks really nice. Um, I could add a bit more sharpness, but honestly, sometimes over sharpening can um, reduce the quality you can create weird artifact you want it um, not too sharp and not too soft one thing I can see in this photograph the edges are really nice and soft it's not um, too crunchy and I like the way it is so I'm going to keep it and then create a black and white version of exact same photo so what I can do I can go back to my color and then I have my film simulation picked I, I always love across, so I would like to keep the across. And there you go. I would let my computer render the photo. I'll give it a moment a little bit. While I'm at it, I would like to zoom in about 50% and photo looks beautiful. Everything is nice and sharp. I don't necessarily have to do 100% sharpening because it's just unnecessary. Uh, well, it depends if you're doing a landscape and you need to see every single details for printing purpose. Because if you were, your intention is to print really big um, uh, on, on the wall, then probably that's important. Otherwise, I stick with 50% uh, um, zoom because that's enough anyway. Uh, it looks nice and clean. And no noise and contrasty so i'm good at that i can do the jump on the same thing develop i can go to my custom jpeg high quality um for the for web and the presets i'm happy with it i don't touch much and then develop there you go the photo has been developed 